And so Christopher will continue uh, the track to talk about like components of a killer API marketing strategy uh, uh, with this the story about Amadeus for developers. Hi, Hi, Christopher. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Mehdi? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you well. And after the great eBay story, now a great Amadeus story, Amadeus for developers. So we see your screen, a full screen. It's perfect. The stage is yours for 25 minutes. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, just to say, and, like, we see your speaker notes, just so you know. Oh, oh no. Yeah, that was like this. It's okay. Okay. All right. So let's say that this is your API. Now you've got all the documentation sorted out, your backend scales beautifully, and all your user tests show that you're ready to go. There's only one thing that you're missing, and that's users. This is where marketing comes in. So, hi, I'm Chris Perro, and I am a marketer. Um, and I love marketing. For me, marketing is all about the power of crafting a great message. And it's about, you know, promoting your brand value and making impacts and driving leads so we can share this compelling brand message. Right? No. So. Of course, I'm kidding. Um, everyone knows the old saying that developers hate marketing. And when it's done in an old-fashioned way, it's, uh, it's easy to understand why. To successfully market an API product, um, there needs to be a shift in the way that we approach marketing. So I'm Chris Perro, and I head up marketing at Amadeus for Developers. Today, I'm going to be talking about the, the mindset shift needed to implement a successful API marketing program and, and some, uh, some practical tips on how to implement a strategy that developers won't hate. So first, let's talk about how to think about marketing. Um, for me, great API marketing really boils down to just three things. The first is being helpful. So uh, focus on the needs and interests of your users and try to address them in the most genuine way possible. Second, uh, you need to make things easy. So there are lots of potential roadblocks that might stand between you and your users. And part of great marketing is removing those roadblocks and make it easy to engage with your API. And finally, it's to make connections. Um, whether it's a first time blog visitor or, or a customer, you need to orient your efforts towards making meaningful connections at, at every interaction that you can. And in this talk, we're gonna look at how to apply these principles at three key steps of the funnel. So the first is the acquisition phase. So this is generating uh, awareness among your audience and getting people to visit your website. The second is activation. So they've discovered your site and now you want them to take an action. And finally, retention. So how to keep your customers engaging with your brand in the long term. Before we dive in, uh, it's important to you know, spend a few minutes on the groundwork. Uh, you need to have two things clearly defined. The first is who your user is. Uh, to build an audience, you need to understand them. And marketing can't do this alone. So you need inputs from product folks, DevRel, uh, UX designers. So you need to build a squad with people from all parts of the company to make sure you're looking at your users from all angles. And then together, you can start creating developer personas. So think about what kind of companies do they work for? Are they startups? Are they larger companies? And think about their role in the company. So is your target user just a developer, or might they be product people, founders, business folks? Um, and this last point is, is actually quite important because the degree of technical knowledge that your audience has will later play a large uh, role in determining what kind of content and approach you want to take with them. So um, one of the best ways to do this is to actually talk to people. Okay, so talk to your current customers, or even you can talk to someone that you would like to one day become a customer. And this will give you a lot of insights into, into the interests and desires of your audience. And the second thing you need to have clear is what you can offer. In marketing land, we call this the unique selling proposition. So basically, it's what sets your API apart. Uh, benchmarking is a great place to start. So how do you measure up against the, the competition? Um, you know, what kind of functions, what kind of features, functionalities are you offering that your competitors don't? And you can take advantage of those conversations that you've had with customers um, to ask them, 
you know, what aspects of APIs or API providers do you think are valuable? And you can make sure to incorporate those into your offer. And one of, you know, the last thing, the most, for me, uh, an important thing that's often overlooked is to go beyond your product when you're defining your value, okay? What other value do you have to offer? Is your company a leader in its industry? Are you pioneering a new technology? What kind of other forms of, of expertise or knowledge do you have? Um, these things can later be used as additional resources to help your users. So if we have these two things well-defined, then we're ready to dive into our funnel. So we'll start with acquisition. Uh, at this step, the goal is to just help potential users simply know that you exist and visit your platform. And there are lots of different tactics. Uh, there's social media, events, advertising, influencers. But today we're gonna focus on two that we have found particularly valuable at MDS for developers. So the first is being discoverable. Brand awareness is great, but the truth is that a lot of people uh, might not know you. And so you need to make it as easy as possible for these people to find you. Uh, and there are lots of ways to do this. You can list uh, in API directories, you can get on product hunt, but really your biggest ally will be SEO. Uh, and it makes sense. When most people need information, they use a search engine. Google, for example, gets upwards of 4 billion searches a day. And you need to make your API findable for these people. Uh, so I recommend doing free, frequent keyword research. You can use tools like AdWords, uh, you can use SEMrush, and really dive into the terminology that your audience is using when they talk about your industry or about your product. Okay? And you can take that terminology into account when you name your APIs, even when you name your endpoints, but especially when you're describing your product. Just this simple step will do wonders in helping people, uh, helping people find your API. So let's look at an example from one of our APIs. Uh, here's the traffic from, from an API that we launched uh, a while ago. Now this, this API returns points of interest for a given city. So points of interest is a pretty common term in the industry and it's what we use to describe the API. And you know, it, it worked all right. Um, you can see we launched it. And, and most people found it just navigating around the portal and, and it got pretty decent traffic. So one day we stopped and thought, how would people really find this API? And it turns out uh, that a lot of people weren't talking about points of interest. They were using other terms. Um, and so we use these to optimize our description. Now, as you can see, the amount of people who discovered our API just took off. Um, explaining the product in the same terms as our audience really helped us almost triple the amount of people uh, who discovered our API in just a couple of months. So for me, this shows the importance of optimizing your product for discovery. Spend some time researching how your audience talks about your product, talks about your industry, and how they would search for your API, and then make it as easy as possible for them to find it. Once you've done that, uh, another great tactic I've found is to create top of funnel content. So what is top of funnel content? Um, top of funnel content is simply content whose purpose is informational, to provide information. Top of funnel content uh, doesn't sell anything. In fact, a lot of the best is not even related with the brand. Um, and its goal is to be helpful, okay? To educate your audience and provide information on the topics that they find interesting. Again, uh, one of the tricks to making this work is to go beyond just your API product. Uh, if you have expertise in your industry, technology, or other areas, offer it. Let's just uh, take us as an example. So we offer APIs for the travel industry. When we looked at what our, our audience was interested in, it wasn't limited to just APIs. Um, we found that people were interested in things like business models for hotel booking sites, or how do waitlisted flight tickets work. Um, some people were easily, were also interested in, uh, in platform architecture. So these aren't our product, but they are things we know a lot about, and they are questions to which we can give valuable answers. So a lot of people ask why invest in top of funnel, top of funnel content if it's not really about your product. Well, firstly, because your users are on a journey. Most people don't usually start with a purchase. Uh, oftentimes they're exploring new ideas, they're looking for answers to a problem, or just checking out what's on the market. So if you wanna generate awareness among these users, uh, it's important that you become a source of information. Second, it helps you attract a larger audience. This is important. 
um, only a percentage of your users will actually convert and end up down the funnel. So it's a really important to build useful content at the top so you can generate volume, okay? And that'll help you end up with more people at the end. And finally, uh, it builds trust. You're creating a meaningful interaction. By generating top of funnel content in the end, what you're doing is you're helping people. And even if they don't sign up or start testing your application that day, they've now had a positive experience with your brand. And they'll remember, they'll remember your brand the, the day that they do decide that they need a solution. So we're gonna see an example from, from our blog. So here's how our blog traffic looked at the start. Um, at the time, our content was pretty promotional, okay? We talked a lot about how great our products and features were. In fact, I took a sample of 20 early blog posts and saw that 80% were essentially promotional. And only 20% really, really addressed the needs of our users. And as you can see, the results weren't spectacular. So we changed. Uh, we started generating helpful content and content that really addressed the needs of our audience. So things like technology trends, how the industry works, uh, questions about the travel industry, and the results paint a different picture. Um, just this change alone increased our monthly visits to our blog by 300% in just uh, five or six months. So offering helpful top of the funnel content, even if it's not about your product, is a great way to start helping people from the very first interaction and get them onto your platform and who knows, discovering your API. So now we're gonna move to the next phase. Uh, this is activation. So you've helped people find your product. Now, what should they do with it? Um, so here it's important to define the action that you wanna take. And the action that you want them to take will, will depend largely on your product. Some people say it's creating an account, others might be making your first API call. You can define it how you want, but the important thing is that you have a clear idea of what that next step is for you. So getting people to take that next step. For me, one of the best tactics I've found is to focus on use cases. In other words, how does your API help your users reach their goal? So users you know, probably don't wanna use your API. They want to use your API to do something. So you need to show use cases that help them understand what they can do with your API. For example, we have, uh, we have APIs that you search and book flights on hundreds of air carriers around the world. And it's a complex process and we have great documentation that explains how these APIs worked. At one point though, we realized that we were missing something. And, and it's hard for some users to envision the end goal with just technical documentation. So we needed to add something that, that helped give contour to our product and explain it in, in more practical terms. We, we looked into the audience and we saw that there was uh, a big interest in creating a flight booking website. So uh, we created the use case that highlighted that, uh, that case. So we created the step-by-step -step guides um, that showed how our APIs could help them achieve this goal that they had. And it worked very well. Um, this kind of use case based content converts 40% better than other content we have, which is not really focused on a clear and desired use case. So if you wanna help your, your customers take that next step, what you need to do is put your API in the context of their goals and show them how they can reach their end goals by using your API. Now, okay, one, one cautionary note about customer activation, especially for people like me, who come from a B2C marketing background. So uh, developers know your tricks, okay? And usually they don't like them. It's tempting uh, to wanna do things like gate content behind a signup or launch a pop-up when you see them trying to X out of your site. And, and in the short term, these things might work, um, but they're also damaging your credibility among a lot of potential users. So what I would suggest is to kind of go light on these aggressive conversion rate optimization tactics and, and remember that your focus should be on removing roadblocks between your user and your API and helping them reach their goal. So now we're onto retention. You've helped users find your API and you've helped them understand what it can do. Uh, the next step is to retain them, to keep them engaged in the long term. And this is something that's really important because retention is the step, is the step that can take 
you know, a one-time customer and convert them into a lifetime user. So one of the easiest ways to get started with retention is email. And that doesn't mean you need some fancy lifecycle campaign with lots of triggers or something like that. You can just start simple and create a monthly, monthly newsletter. Now, the trick to having a successful newsletter, and especially for developer programs, is to build trust. Okay, And with developers, that means not wasting their time. At a content level, you need to think about what brings them value, not what you want to promote. And at a copywriting level, it means get to the point. You need to create short, succinct copies that explain exactly what they're going to find if they click on that link. And this helps create trust. So in the end, the user may or may not be interested in clicking on the content that you've decided to share that particular month. But because you've built up this credibility, it'll stay, stay subscribed to your newsletter and then keep reading it every time you send it out. So let's, uh, let's look at a, a couple quick examples. So I'm going to show you two headlines from our newsletters, one from the early days and one, one recently. So which of these do you think does a better job of getting to the point? How about these? Which of these do you think better addresses uh, our audience's needs? Okay. And, you know, which approach do you think would work better? Well, it was clear to see that the old approach did not work very well. Um, like our blog, our newsletter started out very promotional. We talked about what was going on with us, what events we were attending, lots of exclamation points, um, and everything kind of pointed back to our portal. And then we decided to take a new approach. Um, we started really thinking about what would offer our, our users value, what would interest them. So new releases, of course, but also open source demos, new use cases, uh, new resources on GitHub. And we more than doubled our newsletter visit from one month to another. That's why this simple, this simple action. So this goes to show that if you want to sustain um, retention uh, through email, what you need to do is keep offering this, this content that's focused on your users' needs and that brings them value, and importantly, get to the point. So um, the next thing you need to start thinking about once your newsletter is up is community. Okay, and community takes time, so it's important to begin on this early. Um, so why community? Well, community has lots of benefits. Uh, you can get, you know, people report bugs and make suggestions for product improvements. You can discover new ideas for APIs. Um, you can get people generating user-generated user content, um, like blog articles or even SDKs. But really, the most important thing is that community is a chance to take your customers and convert them into contributors. So whether they're contributing ideas or an article or actual code, um, this is an important step to make them feel part of your brand, OK? And what that does is that creates a happier user. And in the end, it gives you a better API product. So again, community is tough. So where to start? The first thing you need is just to create some kind of basic forum. It can be on your site, it can be on Slack, it can be on Discord. Um, and it's a place where you can, where the community can happen. And then you need to start creating meaningful connections with them um, to, to start this process. So what can you do? You can start conversations and debates. Um, you can share articles, uh, things about technology, new trends to get people talking. Um, one great idea is to give users recognition when they've done something interesting. Uh, so, for example, we had a user that made a really interesting integration that had never occurred to us with one of our APIs, and and we offered him the chance to create a tutorial for a blog, and he jumped at it. Okay, so so giving users visibility when they do something cool is is a great step. You can offer office hours. Um, this is a great chance for for your users to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction and to really start building that relationship with with your team. And finally, um, if, you know, of course, if they ask you to, you can check out their apps and give them feedback. Um, again, giving honest feedback and helping them improve their product is a great way that you can start building trust. So today, hopefully, I've shown you uh, some, some ways that you can, you can start building this marketing strategy. 
leaving behind some of the the kind of traditional promotional marketing techniques and really zeroing in on the needs and interests of your users. So for me, again, uh, API marketing is all about mindset. So remember, you need to be helpful, okay? Uh, you need to help users, uh, you need to help users discover your API and learn what they can do with it. Uh, you need to make it easy make it easy for them to find you, to understand all the potential use cases they have. And you may need to make connections, okay? Um, this is, again, whether it's the first time they visit your portal or if they're reading your newsletter, all of your marketing efforts should be oriented towards maintaining these close connections with your, with your audience. So at the top of the funnel, remember, be discoverable. Talk about your API in the same way that your audience does. This will make it easier for them to find you. Then get them to your site with helpful top of funnel content. Even if it's not directly about your product, uh, this is a great way to generate traffic and get people to at least have a first touch with your brand. Later uh, in the activation phase, give them use cases that make your API easy to understand. Okay? Show them how it works and how it can help them achieve their goals. Finally, in the retention phase, uh, if you do do email, keep it meaningful and, and keep it succinct. This will help you build trust among your users and, and keep them coming back. Then at the same time, start making some first steps towards building a community, okay? That's, that's the trick to, to getting, you know, taking your customers and actually con converting them into contributors that will make, that'll make a lasting impact for your company. So that was just the beginning. Um, there's tons of other components of a great API marketing strategy. There are advertising, there are events, there are meetups, uh, there are lots of things. So, uh, and each of these things really kind of deserves a deep dive of its own. But if you want to talk about any, things, any of these uh, concepts in, in more detail or trade tips or just see what's up at MIS for Developers, feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn, say hello, um, and, and we can look at it. So uh, I hope you've had a, an interesting session and have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Christopher. Uh, thank you for this great talk. I think we have uh, 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 some some question. The first one is like you say, developer hates marketing, but actually there is marketing to developers, right? As you explained, how it can be it can be different. Uh, there is a controversial question about like uh, you know developer relation, developer advocate, uh, and developer evangelist. Uh, let's say uh, or API evangelist. To your mind. Um, do do we actually sell to developers or do we just show them the value and they buy they they try and they and they and they integrate themselves how do how could you help people to understand this relationship um okay so i think both of those are important okay but one comes before the other um the first thing you need to do is have the foundation in place okay so what that means is you need you need uh get them there, show them what they can do, and make it easy to test it. Offer a test environment, offer an easy onboarding process, plenty of great documentation to make it easy to check out what your API can do, okay? If you haven't done that, um, a lot of the kind of more marketing heavy actions afterwards uh, won't, won't have the effect that, that you want them to. But if you, have that, if you have that good foundation in place, then then you know other kinds of developer marketing or developer advertising uh, actions can certainly play a helpful role in in getting developers to your site and to purchase your product. Also, a question about the fact that uh, Hamadeus is a technology company, right? How the culture, how let's say the API, uh, the Amadeus for developers, uh, did it have impact internally about the culture, or it was the opposite? It's because Amadeus had a cl internal engineer culture that you were able to develop a, a, a great developer experience portal? That is a very big question. Um, and there's a, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, I mean, I'm, it's, it's, honestly a, it's honestly a bit of both. Uh, and to be fair, I'm fairly new to the company. I've only been there six months, so I can't tell you the, the full history of, of Amadeus' internals. 
but yeah, Amadeus has been a leader in the API field for, for over 20 years. I think it was um, actually the first of the big GDS to offer an API. So we do have some expertise. Um, and then, then we realized that we need to make it easier for people to get access. Uh, we need to start connecting with these developer communities and innovation ecosystems around the world. And that's kind of why we started uh, Amadeus for developers to make it as easy as possible for them to connect with our APIs. Yeah, and I also heard the number that uh, Amadeus APIs actually powers, I think it's the majority of ticket search or uh, or at least ticket uh, um, ticket buying, right? It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, there's, there's uh, honestly, I, I hear so many statistics that I can't remember it right now, but I th it, if, uh, we'll just say this, I, th I think. Uh, Last time I heard this, it was, I think, 60% of ticket surge. I, I was thinking of the right number. Yeah, something about 60, 65% um, of ticket searches go through, go through Amadeus at least some point. Yeah. So we, we looked we looked at it yes we looked at it last year um, about the amount of data that Amadeus processes and we came to the we did the translation that were they books they would stack all the way up to the moon and then halfway back down to earth that's the amount of data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that's crazy uh, uh, actually. Yeah. Two, so so two thirds of the time we use Amadeus even if we don't actually see it when we book a ticket flight or at least when we search for it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Christopher. Thank you very much for uh, uh, this talk, insightful about yeah the marketing to developers, which is often not understood uh, by marketers and by people in this industry. And I think you get the you 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 told us the, a, a true story that was a uh, that was on the right on the right tone. Thank you very much, Christopher. Uh, there. Thank you, Mehdi. Have a good day. Have a good day too. And now we have uh, Maria Kessler.